Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today my guest is Deidre Teagarden, the Executive Director of the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center in Kahului, Maui. The, the title of our sh program is Go For Broke, and our focus is on the legacy of the Nisei veterans who faced prejudicial laws and went across the sea from internment in camps in their own home country, the United States, to hard-fought vindication and victory in battle in far-off Europe during World War II. The Nisei Veterans Memorial Center's mission is to preserve and promote that legacy. And perhaps we can learn how to face current events and live life now from this legacy. Welcome, Deidre. How are you? I am fine. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It is uh, really quite an honor, and I uh, look forward to our chat this morning. Okay. Well, our focus today is on the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, but I want to le learn a little bit about you first, okay? All right. All right. Now, tell me, where did you grow up? Um, What's your professional background? Give me a little bit of that information. All right. Well, I was uh, born in Pennsylvania, and after the um, Three Mile Island accident in 1979, my um, mother, uh, who is a writer, um, we moved to, we sold the house and we moved to Hiroshima, we moved to Japan. Um, we started in a little town called Shikoku, uh, on the island of Shikoku, um, called Imabari. It was right on the Inland Sea. And from there, uh, she would travel over to Hiroshima to do research on the A-bomb survivors, the Hibakusha of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, we spent, um, many years in Japan, and then from there uh, we spent some time in Hawaii. I went to McKinley High School uh, for my sophomore year, and then we moved to mainland China in a province called Shanxi in a town called Taiyuan, which was closer to Inner Mongolia than it was to Beijing, and that was also in the mid-80s. A really interesting time to be over there. Um, Moved back to the States, uh, went to college, worked for Mitsubishi Research in Washington, D.C. for a handful of years before going back to Japan and helping my mother with the business that she um, ended up starting in Hiroshima. And uh, from there, came back to Hawaii and have been here for about 20 years. And prior to taking the position at the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, I was the chief of protocol for the state of Hawaii under Governor uh, Neil Abercrombie and for a short time, Governor Ige. Wow, that's uh, quite, an, uh, you, you, you traveled across the sea a lot. You were quite I busy. I did, yeah. thanks to my mother. <laughs> and and do you, you speak Japanese, I, I know. Uh, and that, yeah. And that you picked up in, in, in when you lived in, in Japan, I, I, I assume. Yes. Is that, is that correct? Yes, we went okay. to um, Japanese uh, private, uh, public schools. Hmm. So, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. We, um, both my brother and I, he's seven years younger than I am, so I was in junior high school and he was in uh, kindergarten and elementary school. But we had a, a fantastic experience over there. And, okay. um, oh, so much of what we have done so far in our in our lives to Japan and my mother and China, you know, just uh, it's been a, a lovely a lovely life so far. Okay, and and your position now with the the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, what's that? How did you get into that? Um, well, you know, the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center is just an, a, a wonderful organization over here. It was the brainchild of um, Leonard Oka, um, Hiroshi Arizumi, um, Mr. Arizumi, um, 
was in the four was uh, a Nisei veteran. Leonard Oka's father had served in the 442, and since 1980, they you know they really conceptualized our center, and um, it became a reality um, about 10 years ago. So it's um, it's wonderful to it's amazing to be here. I have uh, honor of knowing a lot of people. Um, who were the conceptualizers of the center and when they were looking for an executive director and we had a, a conversation, I knew it was something I, um, I would love to do. It's a, a pleasure to, to share the history and the legacy and the stories and sacrifices of the, the Nisei veterans and their families, as well as figuring out, you know, how we can take that legacy and, um, move forward and, uh, and, and move I guess forward with it. It, it helped that you had this uh, growing up period in your life in Japan in, in a way that 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 gave you some insight into the Japanese uh, culture which in a way also uh, plays into the Nisei veterans is that is that a correct statement it's it's a hundred percent correct I mean all of the things that we all of the values that we learned um, living in Japan and going to school, you know, the values of, of hard work and respect, um, whether or not you agree with the person across from you, you respect their, you, know, you respect them as human beings, uh, loyalty, gaman, you know, every day in elementary school or in junior high school, we would have to stand out in the, the, the center of the school, rain or shine, Snow or sleet, and um, you know, sing the national anthem. Listen to the morning, the morning messages from our teachers, and you know you couldn't complain that it was raining and you were getting wet. <laughs> you just had to have gum on, you know. And that was a, a, a the whole idea of gum on and endurance is such a, a foundation of the the Nisei and the Issei, you know, the first generation. Um, individuals who who came came to Hawaii and you know really shaped what our state is today so yes I think that that definitely um, was a benefit my my uncle my great uncle also served with MacArthur uh, hmm. during the war so I'd heard that side of the story as well <laughs> okay now growing so, up, so so, so let, let's let so you, you kind of had a good education in all of this background but let, let's now return to the focus what is the Nisei Memorial, uh, the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center. What is it? And, and who were the Nisei, Nisei veterans? G give us an education in that. So our center is, it's, it's really threefold. Um, downstairs in our education center, we have exhibits. Right now we have an exhibit uh, on the story of the 442nd because 2018 is the 75th anniversary of the formation of the 442. But next to our education center um, in the back room is a very extensive archival collection of which um, you are very familiar, Mark, um, since you have uh, family um, who is back there as well. Uh, we have a collection of over 200 um, special collections of Maui's Nisei veterans. Um, whether it's letters that were written, uh, memorabilia, artifacts, photographs. Um, and what we try to do is make sure that we bring those items out of the archives and into our center when we do have our exhibits to let the families know that these items that they have so graciously entrusted us with are seen by the, the, greater, you know, the greater public, the greater community. Uh, so we always have, we have about three exhibits a year, and every day something is coming through our doors um, for for the archival collection. Okay. Upstairs, so, no. we have a, an adult daycare center and a preschool, mm. which um, is uh, very interesting as well. So, so who is, you know, define for me who is a Nisei veteran? Who, who is that? <laughs> These are the men who served in World War II, and as you were saying earlier, many of their families uh, were, were put into internment camps um, here and on the mainland. Of course, the Hawaii story is a little bit different than the California and the West Coast story as it relates to internment, uh, and I know we'll get to that a little bit later. But these are the, the, the young men 
who, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the government came and said, you know, you look like the alien, <laughs> therefore um, you you cannot be, you know, you cannot be trusted, basically. That sounds familiar, by the way, but we'll get into that a little bit it, later. Yeah. It does, it does. And, and, you know, we must not make those same mistakes uh, that we have in the past. Okay, excuse but me for interrupting you. Please go on, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. We, we have to make sure we, we don't make those same mistakes um, uh, that we made in the, in the past. But the 100th Battalion was the, the first group of men who were, who were formed. And, you know, they're, they're the ones called the, the, the Purple Hot Heart Battalion. These are the men who fought in Italy and, and suffered so many casualties. But it was because of their bravery and sacrifice that the American government said, wow, you know, these Japanese Americans, they're, they're really something, um, you know, go get, go get me all your Nisei, you know, all your AJAs. And uh, that's when the, the 442 was formed. And many of the men who were in the 442, it was a lot of their parents who were in the internment camps. Um, so and, while, yeah. And so, the, so they proved themselves and then th there was a recruitment by, by the United States. Well, I guess we shouldn't have put them in internment camps. Uh, we should use them as soldiers. Right, but, the, but we were going to still keep their parents in the internment <laughs> camps. So yeah. they're still going to stay in the internment camps. We'll just take the, the sons. I yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the, the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, its, its mission is to preserve the legacy. What is the legacy? Of, of the Nisei veterans, what 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 do you, what is the what does your what does your center tell us is the legacy of of those, the, those veterans? I mean, it's 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 basically it's so much you know uh, their legacy is one that we can still see to this day. I mean these men and their families who were cast aside by the government as, as, you know, aliens and enemy of the state, they instead, instead of just sitting back and saying, well, we're not going to, you know, do anything to, to help, they went out there, they didn't want to shame their family, so they went and they fought, they gave it their all, um, they put aside all of the negatives that were being said about them, and went and fought and became the most decorated unit of its size um, ever in the in the U.S. Um, in the military. And then they came back, and I, I think that is also what their their legacy is. You know, the men of the hundredth battalion, when they came back uh, in Honolulu, they had a meeting, and they chose as their motto continuing service. And on each island, that manifested itself in different ways. For us, it eventually manifested itself as our, our center with the daycare, with the adult daycare and the preschool. And their legacy is taking something that is tragic and un, unmentionable sadness and turning it into something for something good for the next generation. And, um, you know, when we do have the privilege of talking to some of the men who are still with us, they all say the same thing, that, you know, they, they did what they had to do. They did it for their country and for their families. And now they want to make sure that what they did when they came back is something positive for that, for that next generation. So, um, our, our mission above uh, what you said, um, we've morphed it a little bit to say that we, we try to inspire people to find the hero within themselves based on the legacy of the Nisei veterans. So what can we do as everyday human beings to make sure that we're making this place better uh, than how we found it? And you know, and I'd like to uh, talk a little bit more about that. We're gonna take a break right now and I'd also like to go through some of the history of what happened to uh, the Japanese uh, when World War II broke out in the United States and show some images of, of uh, 
uh, from beginning to end. Uh, but let's take a break now. We'll come back and talk about those things. Hello. My name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stand Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha, we are back with Deidre Teagarden, uh, the Executive Director of the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center in Kahului, Maui. Uh, Deidre, when we left, we were talking about uh, the fact that the center uh, doesn't just dwell on the past. It, it doesn't just, uh, it's not just a memorial. It, it also talks about the future and, and making things better based upon what yeah. happened in the past. I mean, we learn from the past. Uh, and, and in that light, learning from the past, I want to go through a few images w with you uh, that I know you're familiar with uh, because they are uh, images that represent a lot of things that happened and that you show at the, at, at the center. The, the first image is uh, instructions to all persons of Japanese ancestry. Tell us, what, what is yeah. this about? So this uh, was uh, based on Executive Order 9066, uh, which was um, President Roosevelt's executive order um, stating that all individuals of um, Italian-American, German-American, um, and Japanese-American, uh, making them be able to uh, be sent into internment camps. You don't hear about the Italian Americans or the German Americans all that much, but they were they were part of part of Executive Order 9066 as well. However, um, their numbers were slight in comparison to the estimated 120,000 Japanese Americans um, who were sent to internment camps um, across the um, across the the mainland. And each island, you know, here in Hawaii, also had detention camps. Of course, I think your um, viewers and listeners uh, know about Hono Uli Uli in Honolulu. Um, right. The Japanese Cultural Center, you know, has done so much to um, preserve and um, share that terrible story. But there were two detention camps on Maui as well. Um, every, every island had had a detention camp, and uh, a lot of people don't know that. And so these were, you know, if you are American of Japanese ancestry, you are considered an enemy alien of the state. And, and it, it didn't you know, matter that you were born in the United States if you were Japanese. No. It, no. If yeah. you had an Asian looking face uh, and there is, well, you know, there you hear these stories about um, Chinese Americans in, in California who would put little signs on their shirt that said, I'm Chinese, I'm Chinese American, <laughs> you know, don't, yeah. uh, you know, so, um, yes, I mean, uh, just because of their ethnicity, um, they were, they were sent away. And, you know, you, you hear terrible stories of how people lost their land and livelihoods and never got it back. Um, but I will say that every now and then you'll hear a, a really beautiful story of humanity where the next door neighbor honestly took care of the, the Japanese American individual's land. And when they got back out of the internment camp, the you know neighbor 
gave the land back and you know had indeed taken so, care of it. So, so every now and then we we do hear those beautiful stories, and but they're so, so few some, and far between. Some good comes out of it, uh, out of bad situations at times. Um, at times, but we should make sure we try not to have those bad situations um, yeah. in the first place. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look at the ne the next image. Uh, is looks like so some iconic. soldiers in the snow. <laughs> Yes, actually, and um, I, you know, here at the center, we're, we're uh, a, a two-person staffed office, but we have amazing volunteers that help out. But the other person here at the office is Melanie Agravanti, and she is our research archivist, and she has been with the center from before it started. She is just, you know, if you want to know anything about World War II or the Nisei veterans, you, you ask Melanie. So, um I was talking to her about this picture yesterday, and she gave me a lot more information on it than um, I had ever had. But this was taken on November 12th in 1944, and it was the um, 442nd Regimental Combat Team's color guard um, assembled at a recognition ceremony ordered by General Dahlquist uh, near Briers, France, immediately following the rescue of the lost battalion. Um, the picture okay. features the four, yeah, Hawaii members. Okay, that's of the anti-tank company. So that's that's interesting because that that leads into uh, the ne the next image. So so the the, the first image was in 1942. Uh, to uh, if you're Japanese, we're going to intern you essentially, or you, you, there's something right wrong with being Japanese, even if you're an American. Uh, and the second right. one is the. The regimental combat team in 1944, after they rescued the lost battalion. Yeah. And and the next next image, let's take a look at that. That one's 1963. What's this? Oh, from the state of Texas. Yeah. Uh, from from the governor uh, saying that the the members of the the 442nd are honorary Texans. Now, and, why uh, why would he do that? Why would he do that? Well, it was the the rescue of the lost battalion. Um, of course, was um, there was a, a, a Texas battalion that had got it had been um, separated from the rest of its its team. And incredibly long story short, it was the Nisei veterans that were called in to um, save the Texas battalion. We, the Nisei veterans, lost 800 men um, in order to save 211 of the the Texans. And um, there, are, you know, all the time. Well, quite often we get phone calls or letters from family members of men who had been saved by the lost battalion, just you know, wanting to share their thanks. Um, these men saved the, the Texans, and therefore the governor uh, proclaimed them all honorary Texans. Wow. And uh, I yeah. think, uh, you know, so it's quite interesting. Uh, um, uh, President Roosevelt, of course, was a Democrat. Uh, governor Connolly was originally a Democrat, then became a Republican. But um, so 20 years passed, and he, he, he felt that this was the right thing to do. Uh, show some recognition. And then the next image, let's take a look at that. That's from a, another Republican, President George Bush. What's this about? It, this uh, it's White House, White House stationery. What's, yes. what's all this so about? So this, this was the, um, this was the, the redress. So um, $20,000 uh, was paid to every surviving U.S. Um, citizen of Japanese ancestry who had been incarcerated. Uh, and this, you know, actually this is the 30th anniversary of the Civil, the Civil Liberties Act, just as a um, FYI. And uh, this was signed, this, it was originally signed August 10th, 1988 by President Reagan. And then this letter is from George Bush, uh, the f first, to the, accompany the the checks that went to the family. I see. I see. Um, so as part the, of the redress, this letter went with the funds that were paid. I see. Okay, and it's interesting. He says in the letter, uh, 
that you know, a monetary sum and words alone cannot restore lost years or erase painful memories. Neither can they fully convey our nation's resolve to rectify injustice and to uphold the rights of individuals. Now that's interesting. Uh, it seems like yeah. at that point, the president, uh, 44 years later, from the president that sent people into internment camps, they've kind of, the nation finally came to resolve that that was wrong. Right. They, they did. And, you know, there's a lot of, there's some controversy on the, the letter itself. Um, you know, it wasn't addressed to, they weren't personally addressed to, to the individuals. You know, it was just a blanket letter with a, with a stamped um, signature. So there, mm. you know, um, there are people who, you know, question its, its, its sincerity um, and, and understandably. Um, but uh, uh, not a good time in our in our nation's history. Um, for okay. Sure. Now, now but, look. Uh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a good time. Now, is there anything about those days that, uh, in your opinion, those historical images, is there anything that seem to reflect any current events or things that are going on nowadays? Yes. So, you know, of of course. I when you hear words like. Um, internment um, being used on on the news as a as a good way to to take care of issues um, today with certain um, ethnic um, backgrounds that you know really makes the hair stand up and uh, without getting terribly political and I'm um, I'm sure everybody you know understands what we're talking about we as citizens and with humanity in our hearts need to make sure that we never again uh, make, a mis make these kinds of mistakes, you know, based on people's ethnicity or religion or gender or, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, we, we can't we can't make these mistakes again, and okay. we can't allow it to happen. We, we have about, about a minute left, and I'd just like to ask you, uh, we often hear the term go for broke used uh, with the, the Nisei veterans and the 442nd, the 100th Battalion. Uh, what does that mean to you? What does the term go for broke mean to you? Well, I know we only have a minute, so I will say that when I first heard it, I, you know, coming from that Japanese background, thought it was, you know, some some Japanese phrase that maybe I, you know, hadn't translated properly, and you know that it was, um, you know, very very deep, which it is. But it actually comes from uh, the dice game of craft, which was so popular in Hawaii, and um, it was, you know, at that point in the the craft game when you know every you just got to put everything on the line it's time to get serious the fun of the game is over and you you know go for broke you just put it all on the line and that's where the term originated from a lovely crafts game in hawaii and it was um used as the as the motto for the 442 and of course it does mean to give it your all but it didn't come from some poem that I thought it might have come from that I didn't know. <laughs> it came from a craft game. But it's, uh, you know, it epitomizes these, these men of just putting everything on the line, you know, come what may, give it your all. And if it hadn't been for these men, we would not have the, the nation that we have today or the state that we have um, because they came back and they continued to go for broke and give it their all. So we are so appreciative of all that they did and their families too. Deidre, thank you so much. I appreciate your time this morning and uh, all this information and look forward to seeing you again uh, in Kahului at the, the, uh, the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center. Aloha. Aloha, thank you so much.